Hey, it's Miko. We finally have our first 2019 BMW 3 Series with G20. This is the 330i. The M340i will come out a couple of months from now, but we have this one. Uh, let's take a quick look from the outside. You can see the design, just quickly design elements. It is a longer car. It looks, I think it looks better. Uh, the hood, it has some design. These creases make it look longer than what it actually is. Big grill, this is the new design um, styling cue. It's a larger grill than the previous one. You can see there are a lot of details in this car. Like you can see how it flows. It's everything about the airflow. Uh, this car has better or same aerodynamic uh, drag coefficient as the i8, even though it doesn't look like it. So you can see everything is, there's a reason for every little thing in the design of the car. Let's walk around quickly. Same on the side, you see this is like a, like a breather thing, even though we were told that it doesn't need it. So it's just like a design cue uh, without actually having the hole over there. What else? Like the whole line, you can see this line goes all the way through. It matches the line of the wheel, and then it keeps going all around the car over here. The L-shaped lights, uh, standard BMW feature for many years but much more 3D, kind of like sticks out to you. Uh, a dual um, exhaust is standard. It's actually um, uh, functional even on the 330i. Let's take a look at the trunk. Again, the car is larger, big trunk. There's no more, nothing opens here. If you do get a spare, then this just goes a little bit higher, but otherwise you can see it's a lot of room. Fold down seats are standard, split in three pieces, um, just as uh, previous 328i or the 330. Just a quick test of the rear seat. Usually, that's the complaint with the compact sedans is that there's not enough room, like for a family car, you get more room here. So, right now, the front seat is pushed almost all the way back, and I can see, sit comfortably. There are indentations for knees, so it's very comfortable. I can lean back. Um, there are climate controls in the back. Uh, this car has also a couple of USBs for charging, so uh, very well thought through. What else? Uh, you can see the opening of the car also is very uh, well thought through. It's easy to get in and out. The door opens wide, but it's not really low, so it doesn't, um, you know, we're not going to hit the car on the side. That's really quickly what I want to show on the car from the outside, and now we're just going to actually drive. Okay, so if you saw, if you know uh, some of the recent cars, the new X3, these are the same sport seats as the new X3. The new X5 2019, you have pretty much the same driver display for digital and same iDrive 7. I believe it's slightly smaller, but it's very similar. Uh, similar new uh, AC system, um, pretty close to the uh, new X5, and just the graphics, I guess, are slightly different. All right, so as always, I just drove this car for a few blocks. Right now, we're gonna hop on the freeway, drive a little bit on the freeway, Hopefully there's no traffic. We're gonna get uh, on the nice side highway where we can open it up. Okay. Just a little bit fun. So, you know, the history, the three series, last big change was in 2012. That's where the first four cylinder, at least for US market, first four cylinder and a wild turbocharged replaced the inline six cylinder. It was a big deal. It was a huge change. Um, BMW took a lot of hit for it, but I think it worked out fine. It was inevitable because of the EPA regulations and new CAFE standards. Um, manufacturers just have to, had to be more efficient and they still have to improve. Right. I'm going to shut off a little bit and show you the acceleration. We're in comfort mode. And this is 60 miles an hour. So it really takes nothing. Uh, on paper, this is 255 horsepower. It feels really nice. Like this is a huge improvement. Obviously, as always, when they 
We designed the car, it's lighter, so you have better power to weight ratio. But just the way this car feels, it's, I'm gonna try to describe it. Um, steering is still, you know, not like the old 2011 BMW, it's, it's still lighter than that. But it's very precise, again, it's speed sensitive, and it just feels like it drives itself, and that's what you want out of these cars. Acceleration, as you can hear, it's seamless. The car sounds really good. Um, uh, I was told it's actually the sound's being pumped a little bit, so it's uh, it's real sound, but it's amplified through uh, through some system in the car. What else? So back to you know the history from 2012. It was the first um, four-cylinder turbocharged. It got improved in 2014. Um, and then again in 2017 when it got to 248 horsepower it's a great engine still is uh, this is just the next level and um, and it feels like it. it it feels it doesn't feel like an entry level that's that's the main thing not that the previous one felt but yeah like in 2012 it did feel like an entry level the way it sounded the way that car felt was a little bit not there this is this is a higher class, higher grade and everything. Uh, what I really like is just the sitting position. The um, ergodynamics, or ergonomics, I guess is the right word, is uh, are just exceptional. As you can see, my arm, right arm rests here on the armrest. My left arm rests on the elbow rest, I guess, here. And I can keep my um, hands on the steering wheel of 983 pretty comfortable and it takes absolutely no effort. While we talk about that, the like, lane keeping assistant is standard. So even if you get the base base car, it's gonna help you not to lose the lane. So like right now, what I did, I tried to change the lane without the signal. It vibrated the steering wheel and nudged me back a little bit. Just to show you what happens if I insist. So I can still do it, but I get a little bit of resistance uh, from the steering wheel. So it's very subtle, but it works well. So it's just going to help you if you're not paying attention. You should not look at your phone while you drive. But if you do look at the phone while you drive, it's, it's going to help you. It's going to keep you safe. What else do we have here? Uh, one thing that uh, people are not going to be happy about, but this is in a few new models, the start-stop. So. When 2012 came out, this was the new feature, automatic start and stop, and uh, every time you would start the car, it would be on, meaning the car will turn off when you stop it, when you turn off the ignition. Then, they, then you were able to change it through programming, and then they just said, they just gave up and said, okay, if you turn it off once, it stays off. They're coming back to where every time you turn the car on, the system is on, so if you don't like, you don't have to defeat it. Again, this is just the sacrifice we have to put to the gods of the cafe so these cars get better mileage and it's easier to get them approved for sale in the United States, which is what we have to do. This car has the driver, this actual car has the driver assistance professional, which is the self-driving package. And I'm gonna try it right now. So turn it on, set. 70 miles per hour, let's make it faster and turn on the steering thing and make it closer and that's it, so right now it's active steering wheel, is it working on that? okay, so it's working but I guess the lines are not good enough it's not picking up the, uh, the marking lanes so the steering is not working but other than that, it's, um, it drives itself I set it at 75 miles an hour I uh, just wanted to try it a little bit and let's see if uh, those cars in front of us are going to slow down. Yeah, they are slowing down, so this car slightly slows down. Okay, so now the steering actually works. What I wanted to try is the turning thing. Okay, that is let me turn. Yeah, I don't know if there was enough room. Let's try it. Not sure if it's not enough room here, but it's just not working. Alright, let me cancel this for now. Turn this off because we're gonna get off the freeway. Turn it off. Okay. So now all the systems are off, which is 
drive it normally. But yeah, this system is great. I have another video where I tested it in the UX5. Uh, so basically autonomous driving with uh, traffic jam assistance, lane keeping, uh, changing lanes. Works great. All right, so a few tight turns to test the steering. That's another thing with this car. This one does not have the M package, but again, the, the handling and suspension. This car probably is firmer than the previous model. So if you're looking for that soft drive, you know, Mercedes, Lexus drive, this is not it. If you don't like how firm these cars, BMWs are, you're not gonna like it. And you know, that's, I think it's good. I think you should get what, you know, what BMW stands for. So like you see right now on these bumps, it takes it well, but it, all the, you know, all the bumpiness, it just takes it away. One bump and then it just turns it off. Just, just extinguish it. Yeah, so handling is, um, I don't know, you really feel the all-wheel drive feel in this car. You really feel more like the M3 feel. So just, um, I really like the suspension of this car. Um, I rode in the back just for a few blocks a few days ago. It wasn't bad. It's not as bumpy as X2. So let's say you get an X2 with 19-inch uh, wheels. It'll be a harsher ride than this. So uh, I think it's a good, big improvement. And we're almost at the fun part of the drive. Just a few more blocks. So other models, there's no 320i on the horizon, there's no diesel, I doubt there will be diesel. There definitely will be hybrid, maybe by the end of the year. Uh, like I said, M340i is coming soon for sure, we can already order them, so probably in May, May, June, they will, they will arrive. And that car is going to be insane, 380, I'm sorry, 380 horsepower on the 3 Series. Is it? to the, the best part of the drive. I just turn off the, um, put it on sport mode. And let's see what else. I want to turn off the lane departure. First time in this car in sport mode. I'm gonna start a little bit slow, make sure there are no lights. Alright, let's go. Way, way lower than the previous one. 
I don't think it's as low as the 5 series, but but the noise level is has been improved by a lot. And um, you know, it's this is great. It's great. All right, let's slow down. Hit the brakes. BMW upgraded this car. It took a while, but it was worth the wait. I think they really did a great job. Uh, just really well balanced car. I'm gonna try to compare it side by side to competition, but really, I, I don't know how how it will stand, how anything can compare to it. Like, not in terms of performance, I don't think you can get a car in this price range that will be this combination of performance, higher in performance, lower in luxury, but but just uh, just just drivers. That's it. Thanks for watching.